Uh oh. Gotta switch my camera around. There we go. Pressing buttons. Buttons are good. Good morning. Alright. Let me get situated here. I'm just hanging out in the garden this morning. Figure. Figure I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pretty hard been pretty hard on the liberals lately I've been pretty hard I know I've been pretty hard I guess y'all call them the, the left I've been hard on them I think I think there's a reason why I've kind of been hard but anyway I, I give people a little reason to come in a little, a little time to come in the room and we'll start start a little bit of a conversation good morning who we got Frank Augustine and Anthony uh Eleanor, got brother Rick is in the house. Give it another minute for people to come in. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. I had a wonderful weekend. I had a great talk with Claudia this weekend. Talked about going um, to help her out with her, her sanctuary. Speaking, oh, speaking of the sanctuary, did you guys see the orca? There is an orca whose baby died. And the mother orca has been carrying the baby, I think now is it the fifth day? Insane, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? I'm not doing a green screen today. I'm just going to hang out here in the garden for a little bit. But isn't that insane? A species that would love its child so much that it would carry it for five days. Can you imagine how funky... The orca smells. Can you imagine how funky the water is? Can you imagine the anaerobic bacteria breaking down? But this species loves its children so much that it would carry its child for five days. Now, I know a lot of y'all are going to sit here and think, you know what? It's just instinct. Animals just do these things. Animals aren't sentient. <laughs> There's a whole lot of mounting evidence that I, I think you need to really reconsider when you look at elephants and you look at orcas and their behaviors and what they do to take care of their kids. And we actually have to come online and talk about let's not put our kids in cages. Like we really, this is, this is, this is the extent of where we are. We really got to put, not put our kids in cages. We really shouldn't be shooting children. We shouldn't be should, putting um, assault rifles in the hands of children in third world nations while we're, I guess, fighting for gun rights in America. Dumb stuff, you know. A um, couple things, interesting things on the news. The UK is having their spit, uh, before we talk about a little Wall Street socialism. But this is actually related. This is actually very related because, um, so now the UK doesn't want to take the, the ISIS fighters, right? The UK citizens who went to go fight or ISIS or ISIL, they went to go fight for the CIA. <laughs> and the UK doesn't want to take them back. I think those are the important questions. I think the important questions are, um, did they fight for ISIS, ISIS? The poor people who just don't want you in their country? Or did they fight for American ISIS? Because you got to figure it out, right? Is, is American ISIS just UK ISIS, same damn thing, same damn thing. Which ISIS did they fight for? which they're just different departments of the same fight. But, you know, that's the whole controlled opposition thing where, you know, you control the other side. You start a war and you convince your people it's a good idea to go to war. You get your allies to go to war with you and you end up just fighting yourself. <laughs> controlled opposition, you know, which is another word I love. I love controlled opposition. I love that word because it's funny. We live in a day and time where very few people debate. We might disagree on a lot of things. We don't disagree on all the wars are a lie. We didn't know very few people disagree on that. Very few people disagree on the fact that the media owns everything. They own, the, they own most intellects and they tell us lies and get us into these wars and, and make decisions for us. We've outsourced our intellects to the media. So nobody debates that anymore. And I'm just curious about this word controlled opposition because in a world where they control all the data, all the media, all the talking points, all the, you can only be on this side or that side. Isn't that everything controlled opposition? <laughs> like, do you really have an opposition? Like, think about it. 
Because I, I look at people, they, they're attacking Brother Assange, and they're attacking Snowden, they're attacking, you know, they're all controlled opposition. Don't listen to them. You know, mind you, I don't, you know, I don't get into debate. I'm not a debater. I don't. I can do pretty good at it, but that's not, I have no interest in debating. If everything's a lie, is not everything controlled opposition? Like I was thinking about earlier, talking about debunking, you know, all the debunking, right? I, I, it's funny to me how something, somebody comes out with something that looks like bunk, and you live in a society of bunk, and your science is bunk, the data is bunk, and it's not that it's wrong, it's just that it's controlled by corporations because of corporate socialism, we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, but you're going to debunk a bunker's bunk with your bunk. And we live and everything is bunky in our society because of the media. The media is all bunky. The only thing they tell the truth about is animals. The orcas they're telling the truth about. That's a female orca that's carrying her baby. So it's just funny. Like we come up with these terms. I think all of this stuff is just designed really well to get poor people to fight each other. That's it. Just to get poor people to fight each other. And that's why I don't debate. I don't have any interest. I don't even know what's true. Why in the world would I debate you about something and I live in a society of bunk? How does that make any sense? I don't even know what's true. I have no idea. And then better than that, why would I take my bunk, whether that be a religion or statism, which was a good meme somebody made. I don't know who made that meme. Um, um, I forgot who made that meme. But why would I take statism and force it into your life? Why would I take religion, mine, and force it into your life when it's all bunk in terms of they're, they're just belief systems. They're things I believe in and I embrace. You know, same thing with the vaccines and, and uh, abortion. Why would I force you and your body and your space to do something that I believe in and our society is all bunk? Um, so I just I think that they use these things to place against each other. And my whole goal, if anything, if you don't get anything from me doing these silly little talks, just think for yourself. You know what I mean? Think for yourself. Don't think like me. Don't have to agree with me at all. I, I don't. In fact, to be honest with you, half the time, I don't want you to agree with me. The only way I get smarter is if you disagree, you know, or if you tweak. And it's not, I guess it's not even about disagreeing. It's just about tweaking. You say, ah, Gerard, you're a little wrong on this one. This is, you know, you're pretty good going in this direction, but you got this part wrong, you know. And clarify it, except for my grammar. You're going you're, <laughs> you're to lose me on grammar. I suck at grammar. I, I suck at grammar, suck at spelling. That's why I went into computer science. I can't stand the king's English. I can't stand the king. I'm going to be honest with you. I try my best to, we got to be able to communicate. And I, in fact, um, I guess the last sister that got upset with me and my grammar, it, it ended up in a nasty little fight on the thread. I couldn't even get into it. I'm, I'm not again. I'm, I don't get me wrong. I'm not a pacifist. I'm a fighter. I just don't have any interest in fighting poor people. I have no interest in that. So I guess the sister got upset because I said something and it wasn't the right grammar or something spelled something. I don't know, whatever. I guess she said something. I replied. And so it went down this whole thread. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> my friend started attacking her and she got upset and I didn't say anything. I stayed out of the thread. And I guess uh, she blocked me and p got pissed off, said a few things. And I guess in a private message, she called me the N word. And I'm just sitting there like, wait, I wasn't even in the conversation. I wasn't. But and I'm not mad at her. I mentioned that before. I'm not mad. I, please. My friends called me the N word every day for my entire life. All right. So. <laughs> Uh, grammar, grammar lives don't matter to me. I'm sorry if you're an English teacher or you're an editor. I'm, I'm just, I'm anti-king right now. This is where I am. I'm in my anti-colonizer mindset. So I really don't care about the king or the grammar, but I do care about communication. I try to keep my communication going. But this is what I wanted to talk about this morning. This is what I was thinking about. Universal basic income is a thing. I've been pretty hard on the left. I know, I, I, I throw my blows and somebody asked me the other day, why I was hard on why I'm so hard on the left, the, I guess the, the Democratic side of it. Um, only because you guys were there for eight years. That's it. You guys were there for late. The pain, my butt hurts the most from you guys. That's why. <laughs> you see Vaseline. My butt hurts the most from you guys. The, the world's butt hurts the most from you guys doing what you've been doing. So you get a little more evidence, but the right's going to stack it up. You know, Trump is in office. He's going to do the same. He's doing the same thing the last guy did because the political parties are the same. So, you know, but how does this all relate and come back full circle? So the UK doesn't want to take 
The UK doesn't, take, doesn't want to take their citizens back. Prompts a few questions in my mind. Outside of the fact that workers protect their kids for five days after they're dead, and we can't seem to protect our kids for five minutes, um, keeping them out of prisons and cages before they even have a frontal lobe. Somebody should do some research, find out that orca was actually a mature orca. No, actually, it was a baby, right? It was a baby. It, was, it, was, it died, like, right after birth. But that mother still loved it right after birth that it carried it for five days. And we can't seem to agree that we shouldn't put kids in cages. We shouldn't be killing kids. We shouldn't be sending them into war. We shouldn't be doing any of those things. Um, but it's all related. So in the UK, I guess, you know, all this spits up, you know, the kings and lords get together. They look at the evidence and they come together and they say, you know what? We need to go to war. Outside the fact that, again, everything is bunk. And even our politicians, they live in bunk land, right? They don't even know the truth because the media lies to them, too. Most of our congressmen, they read the Washington Post. And in the U.K., I'm sure they read, um, what is your, uh, what is that, uh, 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 BBC, right? But if all the media all around the world are controlled by big corporations and it's all about money and greed, then you can't trust any of it, Um but is it a crime to to defy the kings and the lords? Right? Is it a, is it a crime to disagree with them? You know, so if you if you are from Syria, say for example, or you have family there. I mean, I personally I think we all have family there. But if you had family there, and your nation decides to go to war with them, and you decide no, I think that's a bad idea, and you go fight for them, are you really? like a traitor because you're fighting the lords and the evidence they have and perhaps their brainwashing and their bunk that made them to make a bad decision to go start a war in somebody else's country not being asked to do anything in the country uh, does that make you a traitor should you not come back in um so all the wars are fed on socialism they all are so it's kind of hard. This might be a little hard on the right. Y'all might get a little upset with this one. But the reality is, is we are a socialist country. I hate the word socialism. I think it's stupid. I don't have any interest in that. Don't let people die. Don't kill people. Don't rape them. Don't murder them. Don't put their kids in cages. Let everybody have self-determination, freedom and liberty. And that's the exact opposite of what we are in. And this is this is, I guess, more geared towards the UK and America because we are bud buddies in this war of murdering the world. Uh, building empires universal basic income is like a bad word i don't know why you can't even say it and it's just like you can't have it right like universal basic income no you can't have it my neighbors i'm i'm fighting to keep my neighbors from having the basic needs of what they need but i'm willing to bless it for wall street i'm willing to bless it and look the other way when it comes to war right war and the war industry, the defense companies, they can have all the money they want. Israel can have all the money she wants. But universal basic income, uh-uh. My neighbors can't have that. No, you can't have that. Besides the fact that I live next to my neighbor, right? Like your neighbor is the one who's going to come to your house and rob you when they don't have food and they lose their job and they're hard on their luck. But you're willing to give it to corporate welfare. You're willing to, you hate citizen welfare, but you love corporate welfare. And this isn't even a ploy for welfare. I don't believe in welfare. I, think, I don't think that you give a person a fish. I think you give them a fishing rod and some bait and some lessons. And you give them a fish that they can nibble on for a minute, but you teach them to be strong over a long period of time. But this is, we live in a, a corporate social, socialist nation, completely. They run the government. They own the politicians. They get all the money they want. Every decision they come up with, they can buy a law to do anything they want, to force everybody to take their product, um, to get all the money and stipends they need for whatever they're growing or selling or producing or pumping out of the ground. But you're willing to fight to death. You're willing to be upset, be angry, and fight with your neighbor to keep them from getting what they need. But you keep blessing governments and politicians that give corporations everything they want. Their wildest dream. I don't understand that. Somebody help me understand that. You know, um, never thought of war as socialist. It's more uh, selfish. Well, it is, Christine, but I'm talking in terms of the funding, right? In terms of the funding, right? Because we want to keep money from going to needy people, I guess. 
but we want to keep money going to the war effort, right? Like the only reason we're fighting war right now is because we have endless money, right? We keep dumping uh, welfare into warfare. We keep dumping all of this money, billions and billions of dollars. Every president, they get more and more money. And every war we go into, we take our UK butt buddies right with us, France and a few others. So what is that? I don't, I guess I don't get that psychology. I, I don't get the mindset. I don't get the, what is so bad about your neighbor? Is it because you know them? Is it because you have coffee with them? Is it like a game or something that you want to play keep away, keep away resources from the people who live in your community outside of the fact that it's going to cause more crime, right? Like what is so bad about universal basic income? Monsanto has it. The chemical companies have it. Universal basic income. A lot of the farmers who, if they, if they grow genetically modified corn, they have it. They all get free money. All, every last one of them. The oil companies get it. Um, all the defense contractors get it. So why, what's so bad about people getting it? Because remember, we print the money anyway to begin with. Like, this is not even real money. All of it's just printed and you just, and you just give it away. Um, it creates a war-based economy, benefits both sides of the war. It does, Mike. It does, Brother Mike. In fact, and even, even worse than that. But then what do the people have to do for money, right? So they have to go work for other corporations who are still in support of the war economy. It's like a, it's like a win-win. You, you know, and, and I guess people, I don't know if people don't connect the dots and they don't realize that it is a corporate socialist nation. While you're fighting against socialism, you're actually promoting corporate socialism like you're paying for these corporations to run their greed wars and build up the prison industrial complex and the police state poison your food poison your water and then you have to go work for your money from other corporations that prop up and give the same you know types of the same lobbyist system that they're funding government to keep the war system going like we're funding war we're working for war and we're keeping universal basic income going to the war effort on all sides. We must be the dumbest people on the planet. Well, maybe not dumb. Dumb is such a strong word. Dumb is such a, I'm in the garden trying to have a light little talk. But I was just thinking about that. And I can't, I can't figure out why people are so angry about universal basic income. Like they have it in Alaska, right? Yeah, they've had that for a long time. The oil companies have to pay the Alaskan citizens for destroying Alaska. Then they pay them on a, I guess it's monthly or yearly, quarterly. I don't know what they pay them. I think it's monthly. So I don't understand that. Somebody can help me with that, that psychology. And in speaking of like games, because I think that's what kind of what this is when I think about it. I think it's a game. I think it's a game between you and your neighbor, the, your buddy you went to high school with. You guys were I like Al Bundy. Y'all remember Al Bundy? Y'all opposed each other on the football team. And so you're just fighting and it's a game. Speaking of games, I have to post the link. But they're having the uh, was it international tank competitions right now. Yay, international tank competitions where they have like big puddles and hills and things where they got all, everybody, all the international tanks. They're all competing and the crowd's cheering. Ooh, it's like the Olympics for tanks. And I'm just like watching like, man, like this is insanity. We are like normalizing, perfecting big, massive metal machines to murder people. And we don't even see that. We don't even see that that's what's going on. And speaking of Israel and their universal basic income, what are they getting? Eleven million dollars a day. Another thing, you know, if you hate Obama and you love Trump or you love Trump and you hate Obama, that's the same. They all have that in common. <laughs> And so does the UK selling the um, selling the weapons over there is that they all give universal basic income to Israel. They get it. So you want Israel to have universal basic income, but you still don't want your neighbor to have it. Right. That's that's socialism. I guess in that in the definition is corporate socialism. So I guess I don't understand that. And speaking of Israel, y'all, you guys know they let uh, I had to Mimi go. They released I had to Mimi. Yeah, good going. They, they released her. The girl, she's bad, man. She's a kid. Keep in mind, she's a kid. You may not look at her as a kid, but she is a kid, um, which is a great thing that she's out. But it's still a bad thing that she was in. She never should have been there. Never. I, that's why I don't I'm not cheering. Thank you, Israel. I'm not cheering. You are a satanic psychopath if you're putting children in prison, period. Kids need to be kids. And if that if she grew up 
learning to protect her family is that not the core value of what everybody believes in is that not the core value of what all of our ancestors taught us um the only difference is she was born i think where was she born in the um I don't know if she was born in the West Bank. I don't know where she was born. But isn't that like a core value? Isn't that even a core American value? Isn't that a core value of every culture to protect your cousins and protect your brother and protect your parents? And she did that and you put her in a cage for it while the orcas carrying her baby for five days? This is, this is the actions of a sentient species. This is something that you think the, the God of Abraham wants you to do. Um, it's psychopathic and it's satanic. You don't put children in cages. You don't put children in prison. So I'm not cheering Israel at all. I'm cheering her because she came out of bad mama, mama jamma. She came out, you know, she's, <laughs> if you watch the interview, I don't think they translated it yet. I have to find a link when they finally translate her, her interview. But she basically came out. She's like, look, I'm not speaking to the Israel press. Uh-uh. Boom. <laughs> she's like, you're banned. I'm not talking to you. And she was only talking to the other press, the international press. And I was, I was laughing. I, I think it's awesome that, and this is how evil works. When you do evil things, they come back to bite you. So now this woman, this little girl has a platform to say, I'm not talking to you. I'm going to talk to them. And the whole world wants to know what she has to say. But that's how evil goes in a world where everybody's talking. That's why, again, they're doing the centering on the Internet. They're shutting the Internet down because they don't want people talking. As long as people are talking, oh, we're looking at it and we're like, y'all are doing what? Wait, and we're paying you to do what to children? Put them in cages? Separate them from their parents? Because that's actually what that was, too. Hit a few triggers. It's talking about separating children from their parents. That's what they did. They took I head and separated her from her parents. This is why I'm saying that's a model. That's a model that kings and lords since the beginning of time. How do you get people to do what you want them to do? You take their kids, you know, and, that, and that's back on, you know, the, the, the whole foster care system and, and, and uh, welfare reform. We've always taken kids from um, um, from their parents. It's just a thing. Uh, hold on. Let me go back. I'm trying to see the comments in the garden. I can't see as much. Um, it's because the Zionists own America and they don't care about ordinary people. It's all about money and power for them. It is clemency. And then we have to say things like that. And I don't think people really completely understand that. You know, it, it, you understand that we actually are owned. We're not really ruled. We're owned. They own us. And, and I think, and I, if I had to guess, I would say it has to do with probably the fractional reserve banking system and the banks and their allegiances to different powerful men around the world people will never get to know maybe there's some women in that group too but they run the world they make these decisions and america's broke that's just the reality we have no money zero the value of the dollar has dropped 98 percent since the inception of the federal reserve we owe somebody a lot and when you're broken you're busted you don't have any money and somebody says you need to give israel this amount of printed money and you need to never stand against them or you need to go to war in Iran or you need to go to war with ISIS, you know, um, um, Iraq or you need to go to war in Afghanistan. You go do it. You don't question it because you're broke because all that banker has to say is, you know what? We're not going to print any more money for you. We control the monetary system. We control your currency. We're not going to print anymore. And you will do it. And that's what I think it is. I think it's related to that. Now, you got to connect a whole lot of dots in there. But when people say it's not an anti-Semitism thing, it's just because, it, first of all, the Zionists, they're not Jewish, not Old Testament Jewish. I don't know if you ever read the Bible. Those people don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I use the word people lightly. You know, there are a lot of beautiful, wonderful Jewish people in Israel who actually have love in their heart and they protect their children. And they don't want any war with anybody. And they do the things that God in the Old Testament told them to do. But then you got the political wing. You got the, the ones who are pretending that they know a God. They don't know a God. They only know Satan. Only satanic people put kids in prison. Only satanic people shoot kids running for the border. Only satanic people would abuse children. You know, which is why I say that I think the orcas are, are certainly more sentient than we are. Um, they know well enough to protect the next generation. They protect their children, you know, so that's a good thing that they let her out. It's a good thing that she came out, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say it, she came out balls out. 
she didn't come out playing. She came out. She knows she is a world figure. But this this was supposed to happen, right? This is how it's supposed to happen. When she gets released, if we're paying attention and we're watching what's happening, the adults around the world are supposed to step up. And again, I'm not into taking sides in anything. I'm always about peace. And you can't have peace if you're jumping on sides of anything, because just as we could turn on Israel, you know, it could end up in a war against Israel. And, and how does that help anything? That doesn't help anything. We just want peace. You know, that's why my stance on everything is don't take a side. Your lords and your kings, they can't have militaries. You know, your monetary supply, if you believe in nations, it needs to be controlled by your nation. Otherwise, whoever controls your monetary supply, they control you, your weapons, all your soldiers, and they will dictate when your kids will take up guns and go die for their efforts. And that's a major mistake. We can't get out of being a warfaring planet if we continue to let money drive everything. But it doesn't really matter because money's going away anyway. And so I don't really even see why it's even a debate. Like, you know, people go back and forth. I mean, the Fed, I think the you know, you, so in the Fed is a thing. I think that it, it is a means to an end. We've got to go that direction. But the reality is money is still the problem. As long as it exists and we can't agree on people's basic needs being met, we're always going to have violence. Um, a Zionist can be anyone who thinks Israel should have uh, the land no matter what. I think, Brother Jay, I, you know, for me, you know what I think, how I think about it? Because these labels, they too, they probably get us in trouble too. Um, I like the word psychopath. I like that. I like that because it takes me back to um, what the disaster in Nanking. Like when we were talking about that, we were talking about how the Japanese went into China, they went into Nanking, and it was the biggest gang rape in the history of the planet. What did they kill? Something like 200,000 people or something. Somebody correct me if I'm fake news, but something to that extent. The same psychological makeup in those people's minds are the same psychological makeup in a lot of minds. And whether we call them you know, Zionists, <laughs> the left, the right, the you know uh, ISIS, ISIL, Congress, presidents, um, prime ministers, everybody has that ability to have that psychopathic gene turned on. Everybody, we're well not gene, the multiple genes. Everybody has it. So it doesn't really matter where they are. You can have psychopaths in every race, every shape, form. People want to say colonizers, you know, and I like the word colonizer, but the reality is we all did it and we all can do it. Every ethnicity, every culture, every continent, we all had that ability for psychopathic control of other people. And I think we maybe we maybe we can get away from like the labelology that, you know, people they hear label, they want to jump on the side and we just call them for what they are. I don't care if you call yourself uh, Congress. <laughs> I don't care if you call yourself because, I, again, I don't think that a non psychopath can murder children and go to sleep at night. Um, I think that a human being has the same sadness that an orca would where it would just carry that baby. Um, and plus, when you say that, I, like the whole word Zionist, this, whatever, they'll take it and they'll attach it to some racism, anti-Semitism or something. I think we just have to call them what they are. I mean, they're, they're murderers, right? They're, they're killers. That's why I don't like really like to say even the word war. I just like to say killers and murderers because that's what they are. You know, because when you take out the word murder and killer, it doesn't have the same effect. You know, just call them what they are. They're killers. You know, killers. And so you want to side with the killers. OK, go get your sign. <laughs> doesn't say it doesn't say Zionists. It'll say killers, murderers. We support the murderers, you know, and that's how it is. But because the important thing is if we stay focused on the root issue, right, then we don't get swayed the other way because that pendulum always does its thing. Right. It'll sway hard one side and it sways hard the other side, sways hard. And they do that on these labels that they keep playing with. I'm not against the Zionists, if that's what you call yourself. I'm against you murdering people. I'm against you putting people in cages. If that's your group, that's your name, that's what you want to do, I'm okay with that. You were born on this planet like I was. You have a right to live in a space. You have a right to certain things because you're a human being and you're still family. You know, But we have to be careful, I think, not to to let our strong opinions because we watch the film and we watch these kids being murdered it it invokes it it hits you it does it does i i i'm i i don't know what to tell you if you can watch kids being shot running to the border and and being rushed off in ambulances and you don't have an emotional effect but we got to keep that emotional effect from turning us into the monsters that they are you know what i mean 
Does that make sense? Like, I think we have to just call it for what it is, you know? And this is the cool thing when we do that, though, because we bring the psychologist into the conversation. And I think that's the most important aspect of, of what people would call politics that's just not there. To me, it's not politics, it's human rights. But we don't have the psychologists in the conversation. We don't have the neuroscientists, and they're very important. They're very important, because they're the ones who are telling us a lot of these conditions not only can be undone, but they can be fixed. And this is back to the whole UK, you know, if you fought in the war against the lords and the kings of the UK, you can't come back in the country. If you fought for ISIS in, in Syria, fought for the CIA, <laughs> You can't come back in the country is if you had the neuroscientists in the conversation, the psychologist, they can say, well, you know what? We can do a brain scan and see what's going on in their brain. We can find out if they're actually able to be back in society. Maybe we need to first let's bring them down and fix them and do whatever they got to do. I know some people say you can't fix a psychopath. OK, I don't get in that debate. I know some neuroscientists say you can undo it sometimes and others say you can't do it sometimes. How about we let science, real science, not corporation science, but real science into the conversation. Um, so so it, I think it's about not taking sides. I think it's about accepting that we're all born into these feet, right? We're all born into a certain position. We're born into a certain location. Unfortunately, we all get indoctrinated, which is why I don't know anything. I don't want anyone to think that, oh, you think you know it all. No, I don't. I don't know any damn thing. Somebody called me ignorant the other day, and I agree. So, yep, you're right. <laughs> I live in a bunky society where everything is bunk. And so my goal is to undo as much bunk as I can before I die. Um, I can think of a brother answered the question I had the other day. I was asking about um, why does it seem that children and and old folks, the elderly, how, how come it seems that they're more in tap with being human than we are? They're more in tap with core values than what we are. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that from the moment we're born, we're being brainwashed uh, in these school systems. We're being brainwashed by what happens to us. We're given these labels. We fall into that suit. And after that, we're just we're a redneck or we're a commie. We're a socialist. We're a capitalist. We're a this, that, the other. And um, and I think that's a major, major mistake. I think we always get played against each other, uh, depending on the researchers, neuroscientists or the modern day Dr. Strange, like, amen, I agree, Debbie. And, that, and, that's, and this is why I think it's a larger conversation, right? Like, I'm not one to say, well, one neuroscientist said this. No, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> it's like Dr. Frankenstein. No, you can't do that. I think that we have a community of neuroscientists and science that's driving forward. And I think when, when everything is known in the public, right? Like, every, there are no secrets. And I, if anyone doesn't get where I'm coming from on that, governments can't have any secrets. Governments, absolutely not, no way possible. That's why we live in bunk society. And we got people who think the earth is flat and people this, that, that, that. I, I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we don't know the truth about anything because we don't have a larger community. Like, like you know how the saying with the whole 5G thing, the internet of all things, we need to have the information of all things. Information has to totally 100% be public. All the research has to be out there. Everything that these neuroscientists know, what they're up to, every corporation, all the chemicals, every government. If we actually, if they wore body cameras, if every politician on this planet wore body cameras, would war exist? Could we be played? Could we be lied to about science? You know, I love that saying how they like to say, trust the science, trust the science. <laughs> Half the time, they only, they only show you part of the science. They only show you part of it, you know? And this is why they get this whole war on people when they call them a psychopath, right? And, um, and, I, and I think Debbie, that's what, that, what Debbie's alluding to, which is they can turn you on anybody with these labels, right? And, and leave out the fact that the vast majority of people in corporate America and in government and corporate business top CEOs, they're all psychopaths, all of them. And the very, very few of them are violent. Very few of them are dangerous because we, don't, we can't even have a conversation about what a psychopath is, right? Um, here's an example, a doctor. And I don't, I don't know where this came from. I watch a lot of lectures on, on, on the topic, but they were talking about how most doctors are psychopaths. Why? Because the first baby that's brought in you can't work on it, right? Like you're psychologically broken up because this baby was in a car accident and um, 
you know, your human side kicks in and you can't pr pr provide your function, uh, you know, in terms of job and save this baby's life. And so after a while, after the 10th baby, the 20th baby, the 30th baby, the 40th baby, after you had so many kids, your you start epigenetics starts flipping genes in you so that you can provide your job. And it's, as bad as it sounds, the child becomes a number. But because the child becomes a number, it numbs you and allows you to provide your function. And a psychopath, so, so when you say psychopath, it doesn't mean it's a violent person. It doesn't mean that you got to take their guns. It doesn't mean they need to be in prison. It doesn't mean that they've ever hurt anybody. It just means that those is it 27 genes that regulate all the empathy, fear, aggression, all that stuff, um, love, compassion, they're either high or low. You know, they're not in this realm of norm, which is a stupid word, too, because there is no norm. If you were born to a father that's beating your mother, if you're born to great scarcity and poverty, if you're born into any of that, you are supposed to be what they call a psychopath because your brain is gonna make modifications to allow you to deal with the crap that you gotta live in. And that's why universe wanna talk right now. People wanna call me, I wanna talk right now. Um, if they don't have their basic needs, then we're going to have these problems. And so we got to see to people's basic needs. And the crazy thing, though, is about corporate welfare and <laughs> just why we are in corporate socialism. You're not even talking about corporations needs that you're fighting for. Like these are just wants. These are just profit and greed projects. They want to go invade another nation, steal their resources, steal their land or a corporation wants to take over the rubber plantations, going back to the Vietnam War. So I, just, I guess I don't get that. I don't get the whole anti-socialism thing. I hate the label, but the reality is we are a corporate socialism nation. We've always been. We're, we're, I think the world must be run by corporatocracy, right? Which is why we always end up talking about America, the UK, France, and the rest of them, because we are the ones who actually are destroying the world. We're the ones who are handing the world to corporations. And that's why I joke. And I really don't care about like partialisms and sides and labels because that's stupid. I don't care about what Trump's doing because that's dumb. None of that has anything to do with the big problems we face. Corporations run our world. All the presidents and prime ministers and Congress and senators, and they all work for the same corporations. They work for the same industries, and those industries get them to do what they need to do. They modify your news to make you outraged about certain things, and you fall right in, and the world just keeps going this way of corporate socialism, right? Giving all the money, all the domestic, uh, gross domestic product of all of our labor to corporations until they make the robots and then they get rid of us right like this is all again socialism till we get to robotism because when robotism comes in they don't need you they don't need me and there is no contingency plan you know that's where my agenda 21 folks come in but there's no contingency plan for human beings is so you have to think about what do they have planned for us um Corporate America are the predators. They are the predators, Brother Elias. I, I, amen. They are, which is why we have to stop supporting them. We got to stop working for them. We got to stop buying their crap. We got to stop cheering them. We got to stop cheering the political parties that work for them. You know, that's the only way that we actually get out of that. Um, let me see. I think the higher I think the higher you score as a psychopath, the more likely you'll advance in our broken society. Yes, Kimberly. And I think that's what the education system does. And I think that's why they like kids in poverty. I think that's why they like kids to be raised in the barrio and trailer parks. And, you know, I went in the UK that you call them flats, you know, in the very poverty section. When I was in London, I was in a poverty section. I couldn't tell it was poor. I, I don't know what poverty in London looks like, but they told me it was a poor area. But they want those kids growing up in those areas. They want them growing up in ghettos. They need to make sure that you have your label. They need to make sure that you think you're white. They need to make sure that you think you're black. They need to make sure that you think you're a UK person or you're an American person. And, and if they can get you to think that, if they can get you to think that you're Jewish or you're Christian or you're Muslim, then they can get you on a side. And if they can get you on a side, then they can invoke all that NFL, soccer, football, tribalism where I got to fight for my side. You know, and so I, I agree with you. I think they love it and it works perfectly in their scheme of things. Um, so are we going to go after corporations? We need to go after people who control powerful corporations uh, and the governments. Hold on. 
those would be the Rothschild Zionists and their shills in Congress. Well, you know what, Clemency, I think the first step is we just, we really call them at the root what they are. So we don't, you know, get lost in it. Like what I was saying when I referred to the disaster in Nanking is we could blame the Japanese for what they did um, in the great, in the biggest mass murder in known history, uh, the biggest rape gangs that have ever existed. The entire military was turned into a rape gang. We can blame the Japanese and make the Japanese pay, or we can blame the aspects of our brain that allow us to do that. And so that's why I, I hate the labels, because if we if we focus on the aspects, murder is wrong. Right. If we can agree to that, like if we can just come out and everybody says murder is bad. Killing people is a bad thing. We don't ever want to do that. If you do that, you're bad. I don't care what you label yourself. I'm not going to fall into this little label because that's how it, they, they play us. They've convinced people that Zionists, they're Jewish and they're not. They might have some of them might be in the Jewish religion, but they're not. They're a political group. Um, but you have a lot of Christians and, you know, oh, Jesus is going to come again if we just keep doing the things and support them, send them their universal basic income to Israel. <laughs> You know, so I think step one is I think we start calling a spade a spade. We start calling killers and murderers, killers and murderers. Doesn't matter who they are, where they are, if they're Bernie Sanders, <laughs> if they're Hillary Clinton, if they're Trump, if they're Obama, no matter if they're a killer, they're just a killer. I think that step one is that backing back into just being human. And step two is stop supporting the corporations, stop supporting the politicians who work for them. I, I, I have the time, you know what? I think that politicians want to control their... Um, their platforms. I think they do. I mean, because who actually wants to be controlled? But they can't do it. But they don't have the money. They don't have the ability. They don't have citizens that are behind them getting back control of their platforms. They don't have citizens who will criticize them. And so they can make them do anything they want. And I know Bernie folks would be mad at me when I say it. But if you don't turn on Bernie, Bernie will be forced to do everything corporations want him to do. He doesn't have his own voice. Same thing with Trump. You know, you want Trump to have his own voice. You need to turn on him when he changes his mind and he doesn't do what he said he was going to do, what you told him to do. Hopefully you told him to do it and he didn't tell you that he was going to do it and you thought it was your idea. Hopefully that's how that works because that's how Obama did it. <laughs> you know, if you don't turn on him. And, um, and the other thing is you also got to question the law. Right. You have to actually read the laws. That's when I turned on these people's when I started reading the laws like Debbie was talking about the debtor's prison law, you know, which is a great Debbie. Uh, a great, it was a great Debbie. Debbie is a great Debbie. It was a great video, Debbie, um, talking about the, uh, the debtor's prison. Right. Debtor's prison is wrong. Putting poor people in prison. That's what it is. If you can't pay your bills, they put you in prison in the entire American society. I can't speak to, to the UK and uh, different areas, but it's based on that. If you can't pay your bills, you go to prison. Now, they kind of hide it in different ways. There are some ways that are very obvious, like child support is one. In fact, who is it? Gerald Levert, he died in prison because he didn't pay his child support. Or well, I guess, I, you know, and, and child support is another thing on me. For me, there's a difference between someone who, who didn't pay their child support and someone who can't pay their child support. It's a whole different thing because now they're putting women in prison for it, too. But I'm not sure I agree along those lines. I really want to go down that one too far. But, you know, the whole society is based on it. If you can't pay your bills in America. There we go. She was trying to reconnect. OK, there we go. Wi-Fi drop. Um, right. So debtor's prison. So, you know, but the whole point is the law um, once read, it's about taking rights, which is what it always is. And so that's another way you combat it is you actually read the laws. Don't look at the name of the law read the actual law. And I think Bernie Sanders, I think W. Sanders, he authored it. I haven't looked at it and I haven't even read it yet. I'm already against it. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm against your next piece of legislation because I already know I've read enough of them to know that you give them these pretty sexy names. It's going to be, you know, they'll call the law. Who's that? Nikki. Hey, Nikki. They'll, they'll call the law. We're going to save Nikki law. The act of 2018. Save Nikki. And you're like, yeah, we're going to save Nikki. Oh, we're going to save Nikki. And you actually read the law, you know, and it's about like killing Nikki. Like that's that's how they do this, because because what they're doing is they're saying, oh, we're going to stop debtors prison. We're waiting, waiting. There we go. OK. Sprint doesn't like me. y'all. <laughs> you know, but that's corporate welfare again. They run everything. They can shut anybody down anytime they want. 
you know, but it's always about stuff like that. You know, it's always about them playing us because we don't actually read the laws and we don't. So we are in support of these things based on identities. And that's why I don't like the labels. I don't like the identities. I think if we can get rid of that and we call a spade a spade, then I think that's how we get somewhere. Um, yeah, great, great logic. Help kids putting their parents in prison. Right. You know, and, it, and, and this is the thing. Prison isn't the answer for everything. We have to cut this out. We have to let it go. We have to stop thinking that caging people is a good thing. Caging people is never a good thing. It's always a psychopathic, satanic thing to do unless the person physically has to be contained, right? If they physically are out there raping women, if they're physically out there killing and hurting people, you obviously have to do something with them. But taking poor people who just don't function in your psychopathic war-based society that requires slavery and forced labor in other countries, you're not supposed to thrive in that society. Like, think about that for a minute. Like, brother, Elias. Okay, Sprint, they're not going to let me finish. They don't like me, which is okay. So I'm going to wrap it up. But the point is, is that we live in a socialist corporate world. Corporations get all the money they want. They get all the socialism they want. We are a bread basket for them. Our intellects are bread baskets. Our intelligence, our honey pots for corporate socialism, which is why corporations rule the world. And so I'd ask you to kind of consider the idea that it's okay to starve your neighbor. It's okay for your neighbor not to have the basic needs that they need. And corporation gets everything they want. I think you need to pick a side. Are you on the side of your community? Are you on, on the side of poor people? Are you on the side of looking out for people? Are you on the side of continuing to hand everything in our world to massive corporations that at the end of the day, all they see is the bottom line. That's all they see. You can call it right, let, call it left. They love the corporations and they serve the corporations. They're just employees for them. And they're handing the whole world to them. And so that's why you got even now in what Zimbabwe and other places they're talking about.